الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد قان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخرة وذكر الله كثيرا صدق الله العظيم إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم سل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد مبارك وسلم وسل عليه إن شاء الله I plan I've I've set twenty minutes on my watch and I I hope to finish sort of in and around that sort of a time I I plan not to uh, speak to you for too long so that we can inshallah finish on time I really um, I'm gonna uh, reduce the, the talk I would have given you otherwise uh, to the point that I wanted to make and the point that I wanted to share and raise with all of you and it really just ties in with everything that you've been listening to today uh, Hassan before me spoke and Hassan told you about how the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam is an uswai hasana uh, Qibla Shaykh Burhanuddin spoke and he told us about the importance of the salawat on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I'll tell you why. Both of these, I just want to tie both of these subject areas together. You know, the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, in truth, you know, even if we were to spend the entire night discussing the, the maqam of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, the truth is, you'd never ever uncover it. You, you simply, you can't. You know, no matter how hard you try, you, you simply can't ever come to understand what the real maqam of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is. Uh, Shaykh Burhanuddin told you about uh, the Qasida Burda. One of the couplets uh, of Qasida Burda is, كَيْفَ يُدْرِكُ فِي الدُّنْيَا حَقِيقَتَهُ قَوْمٌ نَيَامٌ تَسَلُّ عَنْهُ بِالْهُلُمِ You know, how... How will you as a people ever come to appreciate the reality of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Whilst we are a qawm that is asleep, dreaming in our own world, totally oblivious of, uh, as to who he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. He alayhi salatu wa sallam was the connection between the material world that you know and the spiritual world that you don't. And you know, the, just for that alone, that's why you're sending salawat on him. That's why Allah Ta'ala sends salawat on him. That's why the angels send salawat on him because he means something to them. He means something to the spiritual world. And you know, we only ever saw glimpses, just momentary glimpses of that from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that when, you know, his touch was not like your touch. He, it, it really, it's not that like, when he touched somebody, he changed your destiny. That's, that's what he did. You know, somebody asked, somebody asked Fudalat ibn Umair. Fudalat ibn Umair, radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, before I accepted Islam, I was walking behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I saw him as a man who had, who had uh, brought about fitna within my community. And I was standing so close walking so close to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, that I decided, you know, in my heart I was thinking, Oh Fudala, you're so close. Oh Fudala, you're so close. You could get up right up to him and you could kill him right here. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, A Fudala. He said, Oh Fudala. And Kultu Naam. I said, Yes, it's me. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Ma ma Mada kunta tuhadithu bihi nafsak. Oh, Fudala, what is it that you were just saying to yourself? Kul He said, Ya Rasulullah. Uh, he, he said, no, I'm, it's nothing at all. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam smiled. And he said, oh, Fudala, come here to me. And Fudala ibn Umayr says, I went to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. فَوَضَعَ يَدَهُ عَلَى صَدْرِي فَشَعَرْتُ السُّرُورَ فِي قَلْبِي فَمَا رَفَعَ يَدَهُ عَنِّي حَتَّى قَانَ أَحَبَّ النَّاسِ إِلَيَّ the Prophet والسلام, placed his hand on my chest and he said, I felt that, that touch 
it reached deep down into my heart and I felt the sense of ecstasy leaping in my heart. And he says that the Prophet ﷺ never lifted his hand from me until he had become the most beloved of all people in this world to me. You know, this is the touch of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is what he could have done. He could have touched people and brought them towards the deen. In, when uh, Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Wajha as teachers, we all know that when a student is unsure or uncertain of something, we sometimes get angry and we hit them. You know, when we hit them, they forget everything they knew. And when the Rasul was to hit somebody, he brings knowledge to you. Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Wajha, you know, your touch is not like his touch. Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Wajha says that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said to me, I'm going to send you, I'm going to appoint you as a Qadi to such and such area. I said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you can't do this to me. You can't send me as a Qadi. Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you don't need know me because in my habit, I have absolutely no conviction. And I don't know what to do. I can't take any decisions for anybody. And you're asking me to be a qadi over the people and deal with them in their affairs and matters? How am I supposed to deal with them? And the Prophet ﷺ said, Oh Ali, you will go as a qadi. He said, Ya Rasulullah ﷺ, I lack conviction, I can't do it. He says, the Prophet ﷺ thumped me in my chest. He said, I was rocked back. But you know, from that moment onwards, he said, it, it knocked something in my heart and I became so full of conviction that I went on to become a Qadi. There was never a decision that I took that I ever feared about being uncertain of. I just, you know, this is the touch of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ is the meeting point between your dunya and actually spirituality. That's really what he is and you can't ever see this. You know, Allah Ta'ala actually brought Jannah to earth for your Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam? No, really, He did. He brought the Jannah to earth. And I'm not just talking about the space between the member and the house of, of the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam. It's not that. You know, the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam one day was praying Salatul Khusuf, uh, the, the prayer of the solar eclipse. And whilst he was praying, he walked forward and he raised up his hand. And then after a while, he brought down his hand and he walked back. And the Sahaba said to the Prophet wasalam, after the prayer, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayka wa sallam, this is in the Sahih. You'll find this narration in Bukhari, you'll find it in Muslim. The Prophet wasalam, was asked after the Salah, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayka wa sallam, you did something today which we've never seen from you before. Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayka wa sallam, what was that all about? The Prophet wasalam, said, today when I was offering the prayer, Allah Ta'ala lifted all of the veils from this world and the next. And Allah Ta'ala showed me Jannah. And he brought Jannah closer and closer and closer until such point that I took two steps forward and I could see the fruits of Jannah like grapes in your world. I could see that hanging over and I lifted up my hands and you know, I could have grabbed that fruit and brought it into your world. I could, have, I could have brought that into your world and had I done so, none of you would have ever, ever gone hungry. Not from that batch that I would have taken with my hand. But then I left it because it is a, a food of the hereafter. And so I walked back. And inshallah, this is what Allah Ta'ala will bestow you. you know, this, this is what the maqam of the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam is. Yet... And, and this is why there is this importance of sending salawat on the Prophet ﷺ because he is the one that connects you materially to spirituality. Ultimately, your destination is Allah Ta'ala. You say it over and over. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. It is from Allah Ta'ala that we came and it is to him that we all eventually return. But you can't connect with Allah Ta'ala. But you can connect with the one who is connected. That's it. That's all you can do. This is all you can do. And yet, with all of this, the Prophet ﷺ was Uswai Hasana. The Prophet ﷺ was the best of role models. And the best of role models, you heard uh, Hassan read before us a hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said, I came to you to perfect akhlaq. 
I want to translate akhlaq slightly differently. I want to translate akhlaq as civility. I came to you to perfect civility amongst you. This is what the Prophet ﷺ was. He ﷺ was the single most civilized human being to have ever walked on this earth. And, and he, was, he is the perfection, the absolute pinnacle and perfection of what civilized, a civilized human being would look like. And there is nobody else. I mean, all of the, even the Sharia's before us. And you know, if any small action takes you away from civility, he, alayhi salatu was salam, shunned it. You know, it's, uh, alcohol is within the Sharia's before, but it's not in Sharia Muhammadi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You don't have alcohol in your Sharia, why? Well, look at it, honestly, just look at it. People drink alcohol, what happens? They become uncivilized. You know, this, is, this is actually what happens. And he said, well, that's not, part, that's not for me and my people. Why? Because I've come here as the perfection of civility. You know, I've come here to improve your behaviors. And you know, the, the, everything that he, alayhi salatu was salam, did in, uh, in, in our world, just now, honestly, our world is full of so much uh, corruption, our world is full of so much tribulation. Our world is so full of trouble that what we need to do is realign ourselves in 2018 with the sunnah of the Prophet and actually become more civilized human beings to f and, and follow his practice. You know, civility. One of the heights of civility is that you look after everybody else. And this is, if you look at philosophers in the past, and, and I really, my talk uh, would have uh, initially, what, everything that I wanted to say was, was related to, uh, my, my fear and concern is that when we talk, talk about the uswa of the Prophet والسلام, you guys all think, well, he's not really relevant to me because he lived 1400 years ago. And you know he, he lived in uh, Arabia and he, uh, he uh, rode on camels and lived in a desert and I don't. And he wore a jubba and I wear jeans and a t-shirt. And so how is he really relevant to me? And, and I want to tell you that you know, times have changed but the human condition has remained the same. You know the, the problems of humanity are the same today as they were many many years ago. And people have always been addressing the issues and the problems of humanity. You know, your, uh, we should study the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam like the, the philosophers are studying. You know, uh, Socrates, Plato, all of these uh, philosophers, Aristotle, you know, every single one of these philosophers, they all theorized, they all theorized a place which they described as utopia. Utopia would be the land of the civilized people. Karl Marx, you know, he, he wrote about a utopia. And this utopia would be the world of civilized people. You know, it would, you know what utopia is? Utopia is a world where people would care for one another. Utopia is a world where uh, the, the property and the wealth amongst you would be distributed equally. Utopia would be uh, a place where people had access to justice. Every single one of them. Every single one of them theorized about this place called utopia. You know, Karl Marx did, you know, his call of power to the proletariat. Uh, calling out, let's bring power to the people. Make the people uh, the most powerful. And, you know, his, his theory is wonderful. If you read Karl Marx as a theory, it's really, really wonderful. But do you know who implemented that theory? Stalin. Right? And, and so, you know, what Stalin implemented was far from Jannat on earth. Right? Look back at, at history. You know, all of these guys theorized about what utopia would lo look like. But the Prophet والسلام, established a utopia on earth. He actually established it. And this is why you need his sunnah. He established a utopia where the sick were visited. He established a utopia 
and he called it Taba. He said, I'm going to call this Medina Taba. Or you could call it Medina Tayyiba. He said, this is what I'm going to call this utopia. And this is going to be a land where everybody is going to pay zakat and the wealth and the, and the poorest of the people will still eat. I'm going to create a utopia. And he created a utopia where the old people would still be looked after. He created a utopia which was in, in its absolute peak of civilization. This is what he did. You have to, it's incredible what the, the change that he brought. He actually took men who were burying daughters alive and made them the most civilized people on earth. That's exactly what he did. Do you know, do you know what civilization is? Civilization is that you're able to give a voice to opposition. You know, the Prophet والسلام, he established a utopia where he gave a voice to the voiceless, where he gave a voice to the opposition. The Prophet والسلام, ahead of the battle, battle of Badr, and uh, you've heard this so many times, I want, to, I want you to address the same narration from a different perspective. The Prophet والسلام, ahead of the Battle of Badr, he is, a he is lining all of the Sahaba up before they go into the battle. And one Sahabi is stood out of line. Sayyidana Sawwad. Sawwad ibn Ghuzayya, or Ghuzayya was his name, uh, an Najari. Uh, Sawwad was stood out of line. And the Prophet والسلام, took his, his lance, his stick, and he poked him in the stomach. And he pushed him back and said, Oh, Sawad, get into line. Oh, Sawad, get into line. And he pushed him back into the line. And he made the line straight. Then when the Prophet ﷺ addresses everybody, he ﷺ says words that nobody can really say. He says to the Sahaba, You have known me. And you have known that I have never, ever told any one of you a lie. And you have known that I have never ever committed any injustices, any zulm against any one of you. You know this about me. And Sayyidina Sawad says, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I feel that you have committed an injustice against me. And the Prophet, you know, and the Sahaba, do you know really what this is? This is the chief, this is the commander-in-chief of an army being challenged by a private. You know, this, this is really what's happening. And you know, the, the truth is, the reaction should have been, the reaction should have been the reaction of the Sahaba, which is, we should be off with his head. How dare he speak against the Prophet والسلام, like this? How dare he? Uh, what, what makes him even think that he can speak before the Prophet والسلام, like this? But you know what the Prophet والسلام, said? No. No, no. Oh, Umar. Oh, Uthman, all of you, just stand there, just one minute. Let's just hear him out, right? Because I have been sent as makarim al akhlaq. I've I've shown you, I've come here to teach you what civility looks like. So let let's just hear him out. Oh, Sawad, what injustice have I done against you? He said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you took this lance and you just poked it in my stomach. It hurt. Ya Rasulullah, you hurt me. You injured me. And you pushed me back into the line with that. And the Prophet والسلام, said, this is true. You know, I, it's true. But I give voice to the voiceless. So he says that it's fair enough. It's fair enough that I did poke you. And it's fair enough that you should want justice. So if you want justice, here's the lance. Take the same stick that I just poked you with. And you come forward and you can poke me. And Sayyidina Sawad said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if I poked you, it wouldn't be fair. Because you poked me bare-chested and I had nothing on my stomach. You're wearing a kameez. How can it be equal? If I'm poking you, you've got cloth saving you. I didn't have that. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam gives voice to the voiceless. And he picks up his kameez and says, go ahead. Go ahead because I'm not here committing any injustice against you. And I will not hear that I committed any injustice against anybody and that they were not given an opportunity to call out their rights. So go ahead and do what you want to. When the Prophet ﷺ lifts his kameez, Sayyidina Sawad runs to the Prophet ﷺ. 
grabs the body of the Prophet ﷺ and kisses the, the stomach of the Prophet ﷺ. And, and the Prophet asked, what was all of that about? He said, Ya Rasulullah ﷺ, you're about to lead us out into a battle in Badr. Truth is, I don't know if I'm going to come back alive and I don't know if I'm going to come back dead. But I wanted the last action in my life to be that I touched your body. And I believe, I believe that anything that has touched your body can't go to the hellfire. And the Prophet ﷺ made a dua for him. You know, importantly, aside the, the, the beauty of this and, and what the Sahaba felt, the Prophet ﷺ had actually created civilized a civilized nation where that person would have been given a right. And you know, this civilization continued after the Prophet ﷺ. You know, this civil behavior, it continued after the Prophet ﷺ. There was one waqiyah where Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab anhu was given some uh, cloth. It was Syrian cloth. And uh, Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab took this Syrian cloth and he distributed it. He said, I'm keeping one piece, I'm giving you a 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 piece. Gave everybody a piece. A couple of weeks later, Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu is sat on the member and he stands up and he's ready to give a khutbah on, on Jummah. And when he stands up to give a khutbah, one sahabi stands up in the back and he says, O oh Umar, O oh Amirul Mu'mineen. Uh, Amir al-Mu'mineen was actually first used in the caliphate of Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab. Prior to that, it was Khalifatul Rasul. He said, oh Amir al-Mu'mineen, you know your khutbah today, don't deliver it. And if you do deliver it, it's going to have no impact on us. Why? Because how can you be giving us a khutbah when you have committed an injustice against us? And Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab said, how so? What injustice would I have committed against you personally? He said, Do you remember a few weeks ago when you gave us a piece of cloth? Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab says, Yes, it's the one that I am dressed in. He said, That piece of cloth I took just like you took. But I happen to know that it's only enough to either make a kameez or it's enough to make a salwar. And you can't make both pieces. And I can see you today on the member, you're wearing a salwar of the same cloth and you're wearing a kameez of the same cloth. And you told us that day that you're giving us one piece each and I'm keeping one piece for myself. You didn't keep one piece, you kept two pieces and gave us one piece each. So therefore, whatever you say is going to be wasted on us. So don't even bother delivering your khutbah. And Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab points at Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhumah and, and he says, oh Abdullah, do you want to tell them actually what's going on here? What's happened? Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhumah gets up. And Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhumah says, You know the day that my father, Amir al-Mu'mineen radiallahu ta'ala anhu, gave you a piece of cloth, was I not sat amongst you? And they said you were. And did my father, when he gave you a piece, gave him a piece, gave him a piece, did he not give me a piece? And they said, indeed he did. You know that piece he gave me, when my father had his kameez sewn, I said to my father, how beautiful would you look if your salwar was made of the same one? I gave him mine and I said, you take this and make a salwar of it too. Right? This, this is civility. And you know that sahabi, he said, well, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. that's a good explanation. You know, I, I accept this, so now go ahead, give your khutbah, I'm listening. You know, the, if you want to know what power to the proletariat looks, it's not that you take the awam on nas and you make them the decision makers. Honestly, Karl Marx got it wrong. David Cameron got it wrong, didn't he? Yeah, you, you know, for sure he got it wrong. You, you don't just say, well, every single government has said, you know, we're going to do a, we'll have a referendum, we'll have a referendum. It, it was just a saying, you don't actually do it. Right now, now we are because when you give it to, power to the people, doesn't mean you give them the actual responsibility. People can't decide what's good for them or what's bad for them. You know, civility is about maintaining the good of the community whilst observing the rights of the individual, and not everybody can do this. And you know, this is why in the verses where you know where the Prophet ﷺ is told to be forgiving to everybody and to consult them. 
It says, وَشَابِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ But you know, the next part says, فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ When you, O Messenger, take a decision. It's not their decision. You can consult the people, but the decision is yours. You know, th this is what civility actually looks like. In everything that the Prophet ﷺ did, you will find the greatest, most perfect behaviors of civility. Actually, that's what you were always looking at. When he spoke, it was the most civilized behavior. You know, when somebody uh, gave him salam, he always gave them greater salam back. Always, because that's, that's civilized. It's, it, it increases you in love for one another. And yet, when they insulted him, he wasn't abusive back to them. Honestly, when they came and insulted the Prophet ﷺ, he was so brilliant, so perfect. He, you know, he just said to them, Wa alaykum. Same to you. That's him. Why, why, why would I want to spoil my tongue with foul words that you guys have brought? Oh, it's fair enough. Same to you. you know, this is who the Prophet ﷺ was. The single most civilized human being on earth. You know, right now, you know, the, the opposite of civilization is tyranny. You know, look around you at the Muslim world. Tyranny. Tyranny is that you silence the voice of opposition. You mute the voice of opposition. You kill the voice of opposition. How many countries can really well and truly say that they're, that they're actually following anything that the Prophet ﷺ has said? Where has our world gone where if you speak against a leader, it means sure death? They spoke against Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab, they were given an opportunity to speak. You know, where has that world gone? You know, where, is, where are we, honestly, where are we for all of the pacts that we make with people around us? The Prophet ﷺ never ever forgot the kindness of people around him towards him. Never. Whether they were Muslim or non-Muslim, he never forgot the kindness. Why are you all happy in this, in this country? I'll tell you why you're happy. You're happy because here in this country you still have a good, good level of civility within you. you here in this country, you learn to queue. You know, the British are the best queuers in the world, honestly. No, nobody queues like the British. But something happens to us when we land in Pakistan. And, you know, we, it's at point of touchdown, we lose sense of civility and we, we race out of the plane and we push and shove and we forget how to queue. But, you know, we've actually, what we want to go back to is the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and become civilized all over again. And being civilized is honoring people around you, uh, maintaining good ties. Being civilized is looking out for the interests of everybody else ahead of your own desires. And unless we can get back to that, we're always going to be distant from the sunnah of the Prophet.